Today we're going to be taking a look at Adobe Lightroom and basically how to use it to import photos, modify photos, select photos, and export photos. Basically, photo editing. The first step that we're going to take a look at though is we're going to show you how to copy and paste or basically ingest all of the photos. So start off with the SD card, navigate to the DCIM folder, and then it's in I'm pretty sure it's in one of these folders. Look at the day modified to, t to see just which ones might have the latest photos. So the copy of the photos I need is actually right here from this date, March 23rd, 2022. So I'm going to go ahead and select all the photos from March 23rd. So I can do that by looking at the day modified column, selecting the first photo, and then holding the shift key on the desktop and then clicking on the last photo. We're gonna copy this these photos, so we're gonna right click copy, and now we're gonna paste it into a folder. So we'll go to the desktop, create a new folder. We'll use the command key, control shift N, to create a new folder, and we'll, we'll label it as such. The date of the event, so March 23rd, 2022. No symbols, all one word. Space, the name of the event. So junior days. In this case, it was a Wednesday. So here's all the raw uh, photos right here. Now this is good because then we have a definite copy of the originals before we make any modifications or deletions. It's important to do this at first because if you were to forget to copy over the photos, and you were to delete the photos in the SD card, it's basically irrecoverable. Now that the photos have been copied over, we're going to select all the photos and we're going to rename them. Now, to rename it on a Windows computer, you have to make sure that they're sorted alphabetically. That at the very top, after selecting all the photos, right click on the first file. So the first file at the top. Now press rename. We're going to do the same thing. So the date. In this case, we'll just put Pi Day or no, nah, nah, not Pi Day. Junior Days Junior. Sorry, I can't spell. And then now it has a unique identifier 1 through 42. On a Mac, it's a little bit different. You can still select all of the images and then right click and rename but instead of renaming them like this you can actually have the added feature of just adding a suffix to prefix so that's what we do usually we i like to keep the original file name um if you're using a mac and then just add like the date and the and the event we'll select the first image scroll all the way down select the last image then we're going to click and drag the photos to all photos on the Adobe Lightroom. Here you'll see a preview. So from here you can actually, if you accidentally, for example, don't want to see a picture, maybe it was a, a picture you don't need, you can actually uncheck it. So from here you can do that. So right, for example, I'll uncheck it right here. To add it to the album, press on none, and then press new. And in this case, we'll add the date. So this is March. March 24, 2022, Japan, Japan Club. Now it's going to add to the album and press add. You can also create a new album by clicking on the plus button here. So in this case, we'll do this for the junior days. So create an album right here at the date of the event. So we'll just put junior days. And as she says, we're going to be editing multiple. As she know, that's fine. We, we'll just leave it like that. Uncheck this because we don't want to use selected photo. We want to just create a new album. Create. So going to this over here, we can actually add all these photos to the junior, to the junior days. So same thing. Click on the first photo. Scroll all the way down. Hold shift. And click on the last photo. In this case, this is the last photo for junior days. Then click and drag it to the folder. And looking from these photos, it looks to be in a reverse, as you know, right here. This is the first photo right here. So looking at the different photos, 
try to pick to see which one would be the best. So out of all the photos, this would be the best because it has both Daryl and Kaylee smiling. So from here, we're going to click on the adjustments page over here on our right side. The first thing I like to do is I like to press auto to see what the program does. In this case, it made it darker. Next, we're going to go over to crop and rotate. See under straighten, click on auto, see what it does. Okay, that looks pretty good. Press enter. Go back to crop and now you can actually modify the crop to fit just the two of them. So you can do it like this. Or if we just want to keep it as a as a portrait photo, we can click on the rotate button here and then click and drag it down. Notice you have the rule of thirds box right here, so try to keep them centered as much as you can. In the end, this content will be posted onto the website or to social media, so you want to keep just enough headspace. And once you're done, press enter. Since this is the photo that we want to export, we'll go ahead and press on the pick flag or using Z on your keyboard. This will come in handy for a future step. Okay, so we go over to the next photo. So this is the one of a kind, so we'll repeat the process. Auto. That looks pretty good. Doesn't need a crop. Pick. This is a throwaway photo, so we don't need it really. This is a pretty good angle, so we'll go ahead and press auto to see how it fixes it. Good. It made it better. We're going to crop it out. Enter, pick, next, this is also pretty good, auto, crop, since the action is involving the microphones and the skirts, we'll leave it like that, okay, pick, this is pretty funny, press auto, straighten it up, perfect, now we'll crop it up as we need to. This is the more important thing here. Not really Kylan picking his fingers. Okay, enter. Pretty good. Pick. Okay, so in this case, the auto kind of made it look a little weird. So we're going to look at what needs to be adjusted. So I like just to play with the dials to see what it does. And then just trying to make it better. So the idea is you want it to make it brighter. And we don't want to show too much details, you know. So this looks pretty good. So we go ahead and then this could be a good portrait photo right here. So we'll just make it smaller and bam, pick perfect auto crop. Notice I'm using the rule of thirds to my advantage, having each individual person on a third. That's good. That's rule of thirds. Ah, yes. Best part crop. A little bit more heads, less headspace. Pick. Sometimes you gotta decide whether or not a photo be better in portrait mode. I think this would be better. Ah, uh, yeah, very good. It's better, much better. Okay, and then we'll straighten it out to see what it does. Perfect. And bam, pick. So the whole point of us doing the actual straightening is because it does make the picture a little bit more better, you know? So it takes the KBS philosophy of good to great. And that, oh no, is that the last photo? No, there's there's more. Why are you lying? Oh, <laughs> oh that's funny. And it's okay to do this just out of order. If you just decide to crop it before doing auto, it's fine. Okay, so it looks like it just needs to be a little bit brighter. There you go. Pick. And yes, perfect. Auto. Raise it up a bit. And let's see if we can crop Kylan out. Perfect. And this is the last photo. So auto. Straighten. Crop. 
this is a nice Hila High School photo, so we'll just leave it right there. All right, now that you've picked all your photos and you modified it, you straightened it, and you cropped it, we're going to show you a couple of tricks before we export the photos. So using this one as an example, we'll click on Auto, raise the exposure a bit, and we're going to demonstrate an S-curve. So if you scroll down under Light, and then you create, you look at this point curve graph right here. Click on this intersection right here in the lower bottom, and click on this intersection right here in the top. Bring the bottom one slightly down. You can look and see your results on the left. And then bring the other one slightly up. It does make it look brighter, so go ahead and fix the exposure as needed. But it does make a, a difference. As you can kind of see, it gets rid of this haze that is caught. And so, so use this sparingly, basically. You don't know when to use it. You can tell when the photo just doesn't look right. It could use a little bit more clarity or sharpness. That's how you do it. Let's say an image is not white balanced. In this case, we use automatic white balance. Let's just say what if, right? See, here's a shirt that has a white inside of the picture. Underneath on the bottom, you can see color. There's an eyedropper tool right here. Click on the eyedropper tool and then select something that is white. In this case, it made it more yellow, but you get the point. Undo, Control Z if you need to fix it. And that's pretty much it when it comes to color correction. It is possible to do spot corrections as well. So for example, if there's like a Z on someone's face or you want to just get rid of something. In fact, for example here, perfect picture of me. Click on the healing brush right here. Uh, that's a really big healing brush. So it'll make it smaller just enough for the Z right there. So we'll target that, click it and bam, it just gets rid of it. It's like magic. You know what I'm saying? Magic. Now that the photos are pretty much done and touched up, we're going to go ahead and do a filtering process. So using the filter tool right here, right next to search, you see it looks like a flask or a funnel. Click on the funnel and then click on the flag. So what this does, it brings up all the photos that were picked. All the photos that were not picked are now missing. This makes it easier for us to export. So right here, there's a changing the view section here. So we'll make it even. So click on this, the first photo. Hold the last one. I have it all selected. Now there's a share button in the top right corner, share. Now you can export it as a small JPEG or a large JPEG, full size. If you're going to post it, honestly, like the JPEG small is a pretty good size. So we're just going to click on JPEG small. It now is going to ask you where you would like to save the photos. So we're going to navigate to our the same folder that we had our originals in. In this case for me, it's on my desktop, Junior Days Wednesday. And we're going to create a brand new folder. And this is going to be exports. Again, if you forgot how to make a new folder, it's Control Shift N on the PC, Command Shift N on the Mac. Or right click new folder or click on new folder right here in the windows. Double click on exports and then press select folder. And now if you look in the top left corner under exporting, it will tell you how much is done. Okay, so now we'll navigate to the folder. Here it is. So here's all of our photos. Next, we're going to show you how to upload it. So using the KVikes Media Viking account, we're going to create a new album on Google Photos. So photos.google.com. Okay, so we can click on albums and we can press create album. We'll, we'll label it. So we'll add the same thing. So in this case, we can actually add the slashes. So 0323. Since the junior days is kind of a week event, we're going to add it to one massive album. So we're going to call it junior days class of 2023. Because that's easier for us to find if we ever had to look up Cloud 2023 photos in the future. You can press on add photos, but if you have the window already open, simply select all the photos and then click and drag it into the window. Once that step is done, it is crucial that you share these photos. So first we'll press done. 
and click on the share button, then we're going to invite the typical people. So admins, Mance, student association, sometimes Angel, depending on what year you're watching this video, but always share it to myself, Miss Matt, student association, and one more person, the Hilo High School accounts. So we'll go to info at vikingnakate.us. Send. Perfect. So these photos are available for viewing. Here's how to create a simple link. So press share, create a link, copy. Now you give people that link in order to look at the photos. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching my tutorial, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Not really. You're watching this in Google Drive, possibly, or something else. Renard is walking over here with something that looks really sus. I can't really show you. But in the video tutorial, you will just have to know that it is sus. So thank you very much for watching. And if you forgot how to do this, rewatch from the beginning. Have a good one. Peace.